What I want to try is I want to try looking at a story of Jesus found in Luke chapter 5 where he heals a paralytic. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retell the story and invite the Holy Spirit in so that we can um, use our holy imagination as St. Ignatius called it. Um, we're going we're gonna to try and do that and let the Holy Spirit in to, to guide us. Um, and so you guys can close your eyes or just soften your gaze, whatever works best for you. But I'm going to recount that, that story and then we're going to actually hear the words of Jesus. So here's what's going on. Uh, four guys walking back to their friend's house and they, they walk by this what looks like a house party. Place is going off. And so they ask, what's, what's going on here? And uh, somebody on like kind of the outskirts says, oh, Jesus is teaching. This new rabbi uh, is a powerful teacher and he's got a big reputation so everybody's flocked here. And so the four friends look over and like the house is packed so much so that um, it's like overflowing into the, the front of the house and people are like peering in through the windows trying to see Jesus, hear Jesus. And there's also some other rabbis wearing their rabbinic robes and they're kind of out the out outskirts and they don't look so pumped to see Jesus. There's skepticism on their, their face and in their, their body language. Um, so the four guys are like, we gotta go get our friend. And so they head back to their friend's house and they walk into his house and he's down on a mat because he's paralyzed. So he spends most of his time laying on this flat mat. It kind of looks like a, like a thick yoga mat, um, if you can picture that. And the four, four friends say to their friend, hey, there's a new rabbi in town. Um, there's rumors that he's able to heal and nothing's been helping you. So maybe this rabbi will be able to help you. So let's go. And uh, the friend's not quite so sure about this, but his friends just pick up a corner of his mat and he kind of doesn't have any choice in the matter. And they carry him uh, down the roads back to that house that's packed. And um, as, as they get there, the friend on the mat's like, well, I guess that's that. Like, we, we can't get to him, it's packed, so let's go home. But this house is built into the hillside. And it's probably about, I don't know, seven feet high. So it's not a really tall home and it's built in the hillside. And there are steps carved into the hillside that lead up to the roof. And so they're like, the friends are like, okay, if we can't get in the house, we're gonna get, at least get you on top of the house. And so again, he has no choice in the matter. They carry him up and onto the roof. They put him down and the roof is like a thatched roof. So there's, there's wood, there's clay that's been dried, there's kind of like straw. And they put him down on that. And then one of the friends just grabs a chunk of the roof. And then he grabs another chunk and another chunk. And then he breaks through the actual roof. So you can imagine being Jesus down below, he's teaching, everybody's listening, and then all of a sudden, dust starts falling, and it might have felt disrespectful, but he kept going. And you can imagine being in the room, looking and hearing what's going on and thinking, somebody trying to get through the roof, and then boom, all of a sudden, a little sunlight comes down. A little hole, and then the hole gets bigger, and it gets bigger. And now all four of the friends are just ripping at the roof. Big chunks are falling down on Jesus until finally the hole is big enough to fit their friend through. Now, I don't know what their friend's thinking right now, but again, he doesn't have much choice in the matter. And so the four friends pick up the mat and start to lower him. They lower him down through the hole. And you can imagine being in the room, all of a sudden seeing a guy on a mat being lowered down. I, I imagine probably there's a lot of talking going on, like, do you see, you see what's happening? And then he gets down, I don't know, maybe three feet, and then the friends have to get on their stomach and reach their arms through the, through the roof. But he's still not on the ground. He's probably another four feet from the ground. And so the friends look at each other, say on three, one, two, three, they let go. Boom, the guy falls right at the feet of Jesus and now the room is hushed. And this is what I want to ask you. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit in to help reveal this. Who are you in the story? In this story, at this point in your life, who are you? 
Are you the guy that has a problem that can't be solved by anybody but Jesus? Are you a friend that's helping carry the burden of somebody who's struggling? Are you somebody that's just trying to see what Jesus is up to and not sure what's going on? Or are you one of those skeptical people that seems like anything Jesus does or Christians do, like you're just not pumped on it? Um, skeptical, even critical of it. Just let the Holy Spirit reveal to you right now who you might be in the story. And from this point on, I want you to, to take that perspective as it goes on. So here's a guy, paralyzed, dropped right in front of Jesus, this esteemed rabbi. And this is what he says to this man. In Luke chapter 5, verse 20, it says that when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now, if you took the, the position of the man who is paralyzed and you heard Jesus say to you, your sins are forgiven you, what would you think at that moment? What emotion would be stirred in you? Everybody's looking at you, everybody's looking. And this rabbi says, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees, those religious leaders, the rabbis, they began to question. And they said, who is this who speaks such blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, if you placed yourself in the position of the skeptics, those that are critical of Jesus' religion, what would you be thinking? when you heard Jesus say those words. They said, who can forgive sins but God alone? Now Jesus perceived their questions and he answered these rabbis, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? Now no matter who you are in the room, when you hear Jesus say, which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk. Now what's going on in your heart and your mind? Jesus goes on, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the one paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take your bed and go to your home. Now imagine Jesus just said this. What's about to follow is critical. Immediately, the paralyzed man stood up before them, took what he'd been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Let me ask you this. What is, what's the need that you have right now? What is, it, what is the desire of your heart that you can't seem to solve or you can't make come to be? What is that desire that's just out of reach? Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you if there's a spiritual need that is even greater than that desire. Because when this man is brought to Jesus' feet, the first thing he says is not, get up and walk. The first thing he says is your sins are forgiven. Now, of course, Jesus is trying to say, my miracles point to who I am. So every miracle that I perform will teach you something about who I am and who I am will teach you about who God the Father is. So there's something complex going on there, but also the timing of it. He was ministering to this man's heart saying, son, I, I see that obviously you need to be healed physically, but what you might not know is you need to be healed spiritually. So I want you now to ask, is there some kind of spiritual healing that needs to happen first before anything in this physical world that you desire comes to pass? The Holy Spirit is revealing something right now. Just ask Jesus, will you heal this part of me first? Even before all of my desires, will you heal this part of me? Or maybe, maybe you just need to say, God, I don't want the spiritual part. I just want the physical part. I don't have interest in spiritual things. Maybe just be honest with him there. 
and know that he's gentle, he's kind. And even just admitting to him that you need to want spiritual things. He's able to heal that as well. And lastly, the last thing I want to ask you is what's the last risk that you have taken? What's the last spiritual risk that you have taken? I mean, these four guys dug a hole in a roof. This paralyzed guy got dropped right on the ground in front of all of these people. And they walked away amazed. When's the last time God amazed you? It was a long time ago. Maybe it's time to take a risk. And again, lastly, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you if there's a risk worth taking. Some step closer to Jesus that you need to take. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, but maybe you need to take that risk so you can allow God to amaze you again. Be blessed, my friends.